Hello and welcome. So today I will debunk some feminist nonsense on r slash ask feminists. This is a feminist subreddit. And uh, one person asked the question, is misandry a useful term? And this person says, now I don't really think misandry exists. It's fundamentally different from misogyny and is far less severe. So first of all, this person says that misandry doesn't exist, but at the same time says that it is less severe than misogyny and is fundamentally different. So that's a contradiction. How can something not exist and at the same time be less severe and different? So you can clearly see that feminists lack basic logic. Okay. Now, uh, this person, uh, German Dev Reggie, answered no, because it draws a direct parallel to misogyny, which is systemic. There is no systemic misandry. Uh, okay, I will definitely debunk this nonsense. Okay, there is systemic misandry, and I have debunked uh, systemic misogyny or misogyny in general in other videos. So check them out on my channel and yeah. And also says here, toxic masculinity is a perfect example. It is in no way caused by contempt for men. Indeed, it is the product of a culture which overvalues masculinity and is contemptuous of femininity to the point that men will harm themselves and others in their attempt to perform the most masculine identity. The entire point is to avoid femininity at all costs because it is so socially harmful to perform feminine traits, traits and behaviors. Now this is nonsense and let me explain you why. First of all, women actually demand that men overperform and are status seekers and um, want these uh, want these gender roles enforced on men, okay? So that that's number one. Number two, feminin femininity is not devalued, okay? It is only, if, if a man is too effeminate, then the man is devalued. Um, but if a woman performs feminine traits, that is totally acceptable in the eyes of society and is even encouraged and is valued so the idea that feminine femininity in general is devalued is debunked by the fact that if women perform these traits then this is valued and not devalued okay it is only uh, a problem if men are too effeminate in the eyes of both other men and women okay and yeah so the idea of toxic masculinity is an invalid concept okay but let me now debunk this idea that there is no such thing as systemic misandry i have a lot of evidence that there is actually such a thing as systemic misandry okay so first of all five laws in western nations that discriminate against men okay so Let's just go through the list. And it's not just Western laws, but they're also in many other countries. So selective service and conscription. So the best known law in Western nations that discriminate against men is conscription. Conscription is the practice of mandatory military service for citizens, usually for a period of a year or two with little to no pay in almost all countries that have conscription. It is only applied to men, usually required upon reaching the age of majority. Western nations with active military conscription systems that discriminate against men include Finland, Australia, Switzerland, Greece, Ukraine, Denmark, Russia, Belarus, Estonia, Lithuania, Cuba, Mexico, Colombia, Venezuela, Brazil, Bolivia, Chile, Paraguay. Uh, additionally, the United States operates the selective service system while there is no active draft and men do not normally have have to report for active military duty they do have to register to be called up for service if the draft is ever activated 
Those who don't register are denied services such as loans and grants and can even be denied identification documents and their right to vote. Again, this law specifies men, making it discriminatory. Only two Western countries, Norway and Sweden, conscript both men and women, but in practice, men are conscripted at far higher rates, uh, 68% and 76% respectively. It is also worth noting that feminists were openly against these two nations' recent inclusion of women in their drafts, as they are when it's, when it's proposed in other countries. Genital integrity. Male genital mutilation, erroneously referred to as circumcision, is one of the most severe human rights travesties of our times. As if to pour salt on the wounds, uh, legislators in Western nations have outlawed female genital mutilation and taking the time to specify in their laws that they only apply to girls. Seemingly, they could have simply not referenced gender and given boys the same protection, but actively chose not to. Consider the US federal law that bans FGM. They could have just left the word female out of the law and protected boys too, but they didn't. And the US MGM rate remains about uh, 64%. Rates in other Western nations are much lower, but none of them, indeed, no, no country on earth is it illegal, while ne nearly all ban FGM. Even in a nation like Finland, that only has a 0.82% MGM rate, that's around uh, 45,000 men, 45,000 too many. Default child custody. Though it varies by jurisdiction, in most of the West, custody of a child defaults to the mother by law. That means that if the father and mother aren't married, the father does not receive any legal rights automatically. Instead, he, instead, he must sue for them, which can then be challenged by the mother if she wishes. Ironically, this was one of the primary functions of the marital institution historically giving men a legal right to their children. Feminists have been a major force in the war on marriage. Now, slight correction, not on war on marriage, but on war on the men, on, on the husband, on the father. So this is another clear example of how feminism fights for female privilege, not gender equality. This legal discrimination is especially nonsensical in the modern age when DNA tests are cheap and easily accessible. Hospitals could perform such a test at birth or earlier as an increasingly common part of pregnancy screenings. The biological father could then have automatic cus custody rights, the same as the mother. Anything else is discrimination against men. Gender-based tax codes. The West has a long history of discriminating against men in the tax code, bachelor taxes being a notable example. However, it usually surprises people that many countries' tax codes still do. This is most commonly done under the guise of promoting female entrepreneurship. For example, the Spanish government's self-employed tax is discounted for young entrepreneurs, but the law discriminates by gender. Women receive the discount until age uh, 35, while men only receive it until age 30. In other words, some 1.3 million men are subject to a higher tax rate than their female counterparts right now and any Spanish man would face that discrimination over the course of his life. Discrepancies in social security. The majority of Western nations discriminate against men in their social security systems, parental leave and retirement benefits being the most common. Most Western nations pro 
provide pensions their elderly citizens once they reach a certain age. But many put the age of retirement for men higher than that of women. This discrimination is exacerbated by the fact that men die earlier on average, meaning most men must work more of their lives while receiving fewer total benefits. Okay, and here you can see uh, the comparison between female age of retirement and male retirement age in many countries. Okay, you can go through this list yourself, but discrimination is pervasive, okay, even in non-Western uh, countries, okay. Here's also the maternity leave versus the pat paternity leave, and you can see that women, vast majority of the time, have the upper hand here as well, okay. You can go through this table yourself. This is the this is systemic misery. This is systemic discrimination. So I could already end the video here, right? There's so much evidence already in this one article that th that misery is systemic, okay? But we will give m even more evidence, okay? So child support laws trap men in poverty and vicious cycles of debt and imprisonment, okay? The answer to why was Walter Scott shot in the back while running away is simple. He was shot because a police officer chose to shoot him. But the a answer to why was Walter Scott running away is harder. And in an extraordinary story published today, the New York Times' Francis Robolds and Sheila Devan offer a surprising explanation. Child support. Scott has been repeated, repeatedly sent to jail for failure to pay child support. By the time of his death, he owed $18,000. $18,000! And there was a warrant out for his arrest. He had ended up in a vicious cycle. He couldn't pay child support because he couldn't hold a job, and he couldn't hold a job because he kept getting thrown in jail for failure to pay child support. This is systemic misery, 100%. 100%. According to an interview the Times conducted with Scott's brother Rodney, they warned the threat of another stay behind bars and the potential loss of yet another job caused him to run. But the Times story goes far beyond Scott to show the well, uh, the way well-meaning laws, they are not well-meaning. These laws are not well-meaning. They are out to destroy men, okay? Have trapped poor men in a vicious uh, spiral of debt and imprisonment. In 2009, a survey in South Carolina found that one in eight inmates had been jailed for failure to pay child support. One in eight inmates. Wow. A 2007 Urban Institute study looked at child support debt in nine large states and found that 70% of it w was owed by people with either no reported income or reported income of $10,000 a year or less. But the crazier number is this one. Among that group making $10,000 or less, they were expected to pay on average 83%. 83% of their annual income in child support. Okay. And uh, yeah, th this is mostly... Does, does they will not uh, demand that women pay child support? Okay, vast majority of child support is demanded from men. Okay, so this is a male issue. So they use gender neutral language with with the word people here. Okay, but yeah, this is systemic, systemic sexism, systemic uh, discrimination against men, systemic misery. Okay, a vicious cycle. This poor man 
couldn't pay child support and was thrown in jail repeatedly and he couldn't hold a job because he was uh, thrown in jail repeatedly and because he couldn't hold a job he cannot pay child support this is a this is evil this is evil okay and this is also one of the reasons why men are the majority when it comes to police violence okay here you can clearly see this graph lifetime risk of being killed by police male versus female and you can clearly see across different ethnic groups that in the vast majority it is men who are at risk of being killed uh, by the police okay and also when it comes to demographic differences in sentencing okay you will find that female offenders of all races receive shorter sentences than white male offenders okay and this is even accounting for criminal history okay so men are being discriminated against in the criminal justice system and by the police okay use also a great reddit uh, post or great reddit site um, systemic sexism and it lists many examples of systemic sexism against men i will just read the headlines okay i will link it in the description uk government lumps violence against men under the tackling violence against women and girls strategy has no strategy for gender-based violence that affect men more than women okay in Czechnia, male employees can be ordered to lift and carry 50 kilograms while female employees only 20 kilograms the new york university law review gives unlawful preference to women and minorities and women and minorities this this phrasing is also very deceptive because they don't care about male minorities okay Denmark the government plans to equate abused men with abused women now this has been only been done now but for many years this wasn't the case that they equated abused men with abused abused women okay Indian penal code men but not women committing adultery with married person shall be punished with fine and imprisonment for up to five years UN's gender social norms index measuring gender bias in social norms is full of bias gender means only women okay special university quota for women over 35 34 European Commission completely ignores gender-based violence against men and by the way the European Commission is headed by Ursula von der Leyen. She's the president of the European Commission since 2019. So you cannot blame it on my patriarchy backfiring on men or something something like that or or toxic masculinity. If a woman is heading these types of institutions like the European Commission and the European Commission discriminates against men. Okay? UNDP calls for gender inequality with the extremist slogan future is female European Institute for gender equality falsely conflates gender-based violence with violence against women in Israel women's right to be a parent trumps men's rights to be uh, to not be a parent but not vice versa Italian men cannot withdraw consent from in vitro fertilization and are financially responsible for child. Germany ex-husband is ordered to pay child support after his former wife forged his signature to undergo in vitro fertilization treatment using his frozen sperm. In New Zealand, assault by a male on a female carries double the penalty of identical assault by a female on a male. 
Ireland's National Council for Curriculum and Assessment proposes to focus only on violence against women and teach children about white privilege and male privilege. Ohio Supreme Court decides that mother forcing her two-year-old son to penetrate her with a sex toy is not rape because made to penetrate is not a rape. Wow, that's disgusting. Wow, this, this Ohio Supreme Court is disgusting. Oh my God. Turkey's Supreme Court ro ruled that five years statute of limitations applied to a paternity fraud. Man will pay child support for someone, a child that is not his. Australia's most prestigious journalism awards The Walkleys has banned men from entering a major category. Men in Ukraine denied hospitalization without permission of the military registration and enlistment office. Commission on Gender-Based Violence is promoting the message that women are always the victims and men and boys need to be engaged in violence prevention. UN Security Council Resolution on Women, Peace and Security, Women and Children account for the vast majority of those adversely affected by armed conflict, even though 80% or more of the civilian casualties of landmines and other explosives are men. And in general, the vast majority of casualties are men and boys. Okay, So the UN Security Council is lying. In India, a court may order to release a person on bail if the person is under 16, sick or infirm or a woman. Mexico enacted a law to eradicate all violence against women, but not all violence against men, even though men are the vast majority of the victims of violence. So yeah, with all these examples, you can clearly see that Sexism against men is systemic. Misandry is systemic. Okay. Here's more evidence uh, when it comes to domestic violence, for example. This comes from safe services, uh, government and state level discrimination. Discrimination begins at the highest levels, the federal and state governments, national just domestic violence organizations and state domestic violence Uh, coordin coordinating councils, governmentally sanctioned discrimination, the Department of Justice Office on Violence Against Women is the principal federal agency that administers the Violence Against Women Act funds. On several occasions, the uh, Office on Violence Against Women has issued directives or established funding mechanisms that openly discriminate discriminate against men. In 2002, the OVW instructed the Delaware uh, Domestic Violence Coordination Council that, quote, states must fund only programs that focus on violence against women. The Department of Justice research solicitations have explicitly excluded applications that focus on male victims. On solicitation for proposals from the DOJ, National Institute of Justice, specifically prohibited proposals for research on intimate partner violence against or stalking of males of any age. So the systemic discrimination is at the highest levels of, of government. Okay, the Department of Justice. Okay, so to say that there's no systemic misandry is a total lie. Okay, and when it comes to men's health, for example, right? Men's health in the United States, a national health paradox. A health paradox exists in the United States. Men have worse health outcomes than women, but national offices exist for promoting women's, but not men's health. The epidemiological data in illustrates numerous health issues are more prevalent in men than women, and scientometric data reveals men's health has been given less attention as a distinct field of biomed 
biomedical research than women's health. Okay? And when it comes to education, Stanford, Stanford University under investigation for sex bias against men, according to the complaint filed with the Office of Civil Rights, the elite school offers several programs to support women and no equivalence for men. The Stanford women's programs are just the latest in a long list of university-based women's initiatives under fire for violating regulations that prohibit sex discrimination. Okay, so multiple universities discriminate openly against men, offering women all kinds of programs but no equivalence for men, even at a time where the male college crisis is not just in enrollment but completion. Okay, so giving women more and more power in the education system, even as uh, the rates for men in education decline, and this is by design, okay, they're being held back in education, okay, and also women are three to 15 times more likely to be selected as members of the American Academy of Arts and Science and National Academy of Science than men with similar publication and citation records. And also when it comes to international organizations like the UN, the UN openly discriminates against men's issues, okay, is biased against men's issues. And you can clearly see an example here, for example, the UN gave women only eight coupons in Haiti, right, which means starvation for men, okay? And men in armed conflict are by far the most victims, okay? Men are in fact far more vulnerable to victimization than women with a 1.3 to 10 times higher likelihood of death, okay? But as this paper illustrates, uh, they're being excluded from the discourse in international documents of all kinds of NGOs and international organizations, humanitarian uh, organizations that are supposed to help civilian victims of war. They only focus on women and children, but not men. Okay, and when when they say children, they mean girls, not boys. And this is also framing in the media, in the international media. Okay, so men receive less help, even though they are the most victims in these armed conflicts. This also le leads to ignoring of male victims of sexual violence in conflict as Chatham House illustrates. And here's also a great article, Forced Male uh, Circumcision, Gender-Based Violence in Kenya. And as they say here, despite the sex-neutral language of the Rome statue, many international instruments and customary international laws still exclude men as a class of sexual violence victims in armed conflict. Documents at international level frame sexual violence as an issue involving women and girls, excluding men from legal frameworks, enforcement mechanisms, and receiving protection. If this is not systemic uh, misandry, then I don't know what is. Okay, And here is also evidence from the UK. These men say women raped them, but the law does not agree. So basically the law, the rape law in UK is defined as uh, men being only uh, portrayed as the perpetrators and never the victims. Okay, so the, the mechanism is stacked against men. They have no legal protect, protection in the UK against sexual violence by women okay and the same also or similar is true for for boys sexual abuse of boys is often overlooked by state laws okay meanwhile the governments various governments like the australian government 
is only is is focusing on bullshit like this like Andrew Tate okay the Australian government froze 3.5 million dollars at the Tate problem extremist influencers so I told you in the, in the so I told you in my last video that they would uh, focus more on this hysteria surrounding Andrew Tate and the and the manosphere and and all this bullshit, right? They want to to brainwash children with the feminist narratives, and this is what they throw money at. Meanwhile, male children are not even protected when it comes to sexual violence and sexual abuse. Okay. So yeah, with all these examples, it is very clear that misandry is systemic. Okay, our feminists is a hate hateful uh, subreddit okay that puts out anti-male dis disinformation okay so yeah thanks for watching